Mike. Ha cha cha. Let's see. Here we go. Talking Van Halen intro. <laughs> This is a podcast. Become a channel member for more. Please subscribe, please. Johnny Bean TV. Here we are. Hey, everybody. This is Johnny Bean and Jay Hannon. Welcome to Talking Van Halen. This is the show where we talk Van Halen. I mean, what more do you want? (laughs) you know what is today it is june 18th 2021 809 p.m eastern 509 pacific out here in santa cruz california where it's very 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 nice here i have a feeling it might be very very hot where you are maybe sorry i was listening to something i was listening to sammy talk about the uh, carnal knowledge record I mm-hmm. just saw that he updated the – we're going to talk about this, but the Van Hagar oh, yeah. Other Half Instagram page, which I'm sure you follow, I follow, everybody in the chat that knows about I was, it follows. I was like the fourth person to follow it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, somehow this stuff I, – I get the alert right away to like everything. And, um, and yeah, definitely. We'll talk about that. There's some cool yeah. stuff cool stuff with that 30 Um, years man it's it's like i can't believe that (laughs) i know because i was i was thinking think you know back to the future is 30 years marty goes back in time 30 years totally different time if we went back in time 30 years now it's really not that different no except the only thing that would be different would be like just internet these These things things. yeah exactly even that they had these things back then they just looked like they looked more like like these kind of you know there was no smartphones uh, or this a flip yeah or a brick (laughs) yeah (laughs) but you're right yeah was when you when you're right like you think about when you saw back to the future for the first time and then back to the future two for the first time the way they went back 30 forward 30 oh yeah it, it almost seems like it's it's a million years but in the grand scheme of things it's really and they make it seem like you know everything would change that much in the future which obviously no <laughs> yeah and it's 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 science fiction too yeah it's, it's science it's fact yeah it's entertainment so it has to be it has to be kind of kind of out there and, and corny and yeah, but with, with also on the other side of the coin, there's the movies that show the future, and they almost underestimate, you know, what would be out there. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Welcome yes. to science fiction talk, everybody. We're doing Johnny and Jay. We're going to talk yeah. about Star Trek tonight, some Star Wars, and uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> and going back in time, thirty years back in time. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about that. That's it's that's, that's yikes. Um but hey, hey everybody. Uh, we got some quick uh, announcements here. Uh we have a channel membership program here on Johnny Bean TV on YouTube. If you'd like to become a channel member, where some of the perks are you get your name in green in the live chat like Fruitcake Tony, British Electric Blues show, Charles Green. I see you guys. Those are channel members, so they get uh, early access to videos. They get bonus videos. Um, they get uh, uh, special emojis in the chat. Um, just lots of extra, extra stuff. And if you'd like to become a channel member, click the join button below. We got twenty-four thumbs ups. And the top tier of channel membership are the executive producers here on Johnny Bean TV. And that list is 
Charles Green, Wayno, Joe Christian, Michael B, Thomas Santiago, Music Therapy Laz, Bent Tom, The Chad. Thank you for messaging me, uh, The Chad. I think that was this morning. Uh, James Gum, David Shigamori, Lenny Lou, and Mary, Michael Smith, Randy Price, Stephen Franklin, Dan Halen, Crazy Cook 678, John Moronic, Jim Ray Hawkins, Mike Neese, and Steve Carmichael. That is the top tier of channel membership. The uh, executive producers, one of the perks is you get your name read in the beginning of each and every show. So I uh, hope all your ears are burning. <laughs> and we're also live. Wait a minute. What else? Oh, speaking of uh, YouTube and any super chats will we'll change the color of my lights. Like, as you can see behind me, they are now yellow. And that is thank you to False Flag. False Flag, huge supporter here on Johnny Bean TV, uh, YouTube. Thank you so much, man. The first scene where Marty plugs in the guitar and gets thrown back confirmed my love for guitars. Dude, same. I, I think I think with uh, with with uh, with us, um, that was that was a huge uh, influence on me because I w I wasn't playing the guitar yet then, <clears throat> but I wanted to, especially after I saw that scene, and then of course heard the uh, the cassette you know, that said Edward Van Halen across it. That was definitely <laughs> huge for me. Um, and can't believe that was 30 years ago. Darth Vader came down from the planet Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep this Darth Vader stuff to ourselves. <laughs> oh, my gosh. False flag. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah. So see, see, his, his super chat is a yellow tier. Changed my lights yellow. And any any uh, super chats support the channel, support these shows. Um, it all goes back into the shows. Um, and as what Jay and I were talking about earlier, it that's where it goes. Man, a lot of rhyming. <laughs> Man, uh, and we're also live on Facebook, Johnny Bean TV Facebook page. Give me a like over there, please. We're live currently. And we're also live in the Van Halen 1974 to 2020 Facebook group, where I think we're at almost, uh, we're on our way to 59,000 members, I think now. 59,000, 5150s. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's all day, every day Van Halen uh, craziness over there. So if you'd like to join the group, link is in the chat. It should be anyway. FBVH uh, is the. Uh, is a command for Nightbot. Are there the commands in the? Uh, no, not on this one. So there's that, and this is something I brought up on Tuesday. Tuesday. The, the other guys didn't seem too impressed, but <laughs> uh, hey, that know. doesn't surprise me. Yeah, they don't. They're, yeah, just uh, anyway. Giphy. Giphy is is the internet's largest uh, database of uh, of gifs. And we invite you guys to turn any moment of these videos into a GIF over on Giphy. All you got to do is, I think you have to create a, an account. It's really quick. Um, and you can actually just uh, drop the link to any of these YouTube videos into Giphy and create a little a GIF, which is a moving picture, you know. So an example of that would be something like, even though this is animated, it'd be something like like this. That's a GIF, is what that is. And thank you to, to Cobra Kai for, for all your all your stuff. Well, that just that just made me think of something because my mother in law is in the chat right now, and she hey. wa she watched the Saturday Night Show, obviously the rerun of it. Mm -hmm. So she comes over. Was it yesterday or two days ago? And she brings in this CVS, you know photo fold or uh yeah folder you know and she opens it up and she pulls this out <laughs> <laughs> she took screenshots of me <laughs> yucking it up <laughs> and printed them out and dropped them off and i was like and then when you started the gifts i'm like now she could do that she could yeah. waste time doing that yeah carol carol all you got to do is, is go over to Giphy, 
create an account. It's really easy to do. It's free. And <laughs> and all you got to do is drop the link. Let's say of this video, you drop the link of this video. It'll let you choose a little section that you'd like to create the GIF of. You hit save. You save it to your account. Tag us. Tag. Uh, you don't have to put the hashtag in. They do that automatically. But just just put Johnny Bean TV. Put any of our names. You know whatever it is. And and I think. See here's here's the, the the thought behind this. I think any of those gifts uh, once uh, uploaded will be available to use everywhere. So Facebook, Twitter, uh, where, wherever wherever you can you can uh, you know because gifts are huge on Facebook you know in the oh, comments. Yeah. I use them. I use them all the time. Um, so that'd be that'd be a great way great way to promote these videos, promote these shows, and they're fun. Of course. I mean, imagine having a gif of that. Fall I mean, <laughs> down that nineteen beers live <laughs> on a Saturday night. <laughs> that would have been amazing, dude. I'd I'd still be. Jeannie would have had to come get me today from the hospital if I drank nineteen beers. I don't care if they're Bud Light or not. I would have been in. I would have been in deep doo doo. There's no way. No. No. Oh. It's and it, not worth it. Not worth it at all. I'm, I'm, I'm on the Lacroix train myself or Lacroix, whatever this stuff is. Remy Lacroix. Yeah, I'm on her. You too. know, this, um. this is, this, <laughs> the, this is what I'm doing now because it, it's not not worth it. I felt I I felt sick thinking about how he was going to feel that next day. Hashtag Rem, Remy Lacroix. Uh, Kurt fifty one fifty says Gary Bushnoff. No, it's Gary Bucknoff. It is Gary Bucknoff. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> See, a lot of things happen on Saturday nights. If you're not watching Saturday night shows, whether live or the rerun, you're missing out. You really are. Mm -hmm. If you're not, if you're skipping any of these shows throughout the week, you're missing out. There's, there's so much, there's so much. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's, it's awesome. Yep. Uh, okay. Really quickly. What, what else, what else can I, can I tell you guys? Um, well, I'll tell you something real fast. I have a, a new guitar day, even though it came. Wow. Sunday. Sunday, really? Sunday, Raceway Park. Yeah. Sunday. So I'll, I'll be showing that in a, in a little bit. Stick around. Never a skip. Awesome, man. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's see. We got Facebook stars over on Facebook. Help support the uh, support the uh, the shows over on Facebook. There's that. Um, and then uh, here's something I've been I've been doing a lot lately, especially like around 11 p.m., 12 p.m. my time. So two in the morning, three in the morning your time. Oh. I've been I've been uh, twitching. Uh, a lot and doing some GTA and we actually have people from here that have been watching me uh, KXM Rock okay, is that right? KXM Rock was watching me and, and uh, 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 what's the other guy's name dang it if anybody knows anyway yeah uh, uh, Robot Master Switch I, th I think that was it um, they've been watching me over on over on Twitch doing some GTA and actually Robot Master Switch I, I think that's you man I, I hope it is We've actually been playing together on on uh, over there where we're t we we talk through the Discord. We actually talk through the Discord in real time, and we actually play. You know, mm -hmm. he sh he showed me his apartment. He actually has a, an apartment over there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool. Pretty cool. Well, are you so, good at the game, or do you suck? I'm getting better. I'm getting I'm getting a lot better. A lot better, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So if you guys uh, check me out over there, follow me over there. Um, and like I said, I do that in the late evening here. So for a couple hours, I'm live for a couple hours over there, having a, a great time. So <clears throat> so please follow me, please, please, please follow me. Please. David Ennis, real quick, David Ennis, thank you. He says, uh, I guess he bought a new um gizmachi shirt from that link so he said he has one on right now thank you dave, dave oh, right on appreciate it man giz merch thank you there we go 
We got, well, we got uh, some Adams. heavy hitters in the chat tonight. We got Alan Garber in here, Kurt5150. We got a bunch of cats, man. Fruitcake Tony's in here. R2R3. Awesome. Quentin James. Should I do a quick roll call? I thought you were. I know. I might as well. <laughs> might as well since I'm reading half the names anyway. Yeah. Everyone say hi real, fa real fast. Real fast. And Let us I'll know where you're from. Everybody. Where are you from? Where, where are you guys from? See, that's where you start to get some of the, the new names that you've never seen before. Let us know in the chat where you're where you're watching us from tonight. I'm in Santa Cruz again, where it's a wonderful uh, uh, 79 degrees out. What's it here? 81. Okay, so we're close. Yeah. Close. All right. Let's see. Arizona, my mom's gap. Um <laughs> Charlotte, Stanford, Connecticut, Texas, north of Seattle, Peter north of Seattle. Uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, over Louis on the Van Halen group. Yep, Louisville, Kentucky, Pittsburgh, <laughs> Pennsylvania area, uh, 60 miles north of New York City. Wait a minute. Susan, are you anywhere near like the uh, Newburgh, Orange County, New Windsor, Poughkeepsie, anywhere around there? Um, Buffalo, New York, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, New Orleans, Charlotte, Tampa. Carol says, hi, I'm right up the street from Jeannie and Jay. Or no, she says, right up the street from Jeannie and Jeannie. Okay. I have two wives down there, huh? I, I cloned her. <laughs> two of them down there. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's River, New Jersey. Uh, yeah. Oh, Illinois. We got a, hopefully a Bears fan in there. Detroit, Michigan. Hopefully not a Lions fan. <laughs> All right. I'm going to read a roll call here. We got Sigmund Frude, Beef Oven, Bob Genghis Khan, Socrates Johnson, Dennis Frude. Uh, we got seven over eight, all Dave, all night. Can't drive 55. That might be Sammy Hagar. He might be in here. Carol Adams. Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Green, Christopher Live, Soa, Sour, Dan of New Jersey. I'm assuming he's from New Jersey. David Ennis, E flat 916. Frank Spear. Hey, Frank. Uh, Fruitcake Tony, Alan Garber. Frank, let me just say, Frank Spear, thank you for watching the older videos on the channel. He was watching the video from like five years ago and leaving comments, which is great. Wow. That's because good. that, that, that really helps get the older stuff back in the rotation, you know. That's BJ. So, so before J, right? <laughs> Five years ago. So yeah, Frank Spear, thank you again, man. Thank you. Uh, Hal Face, James Gum, Janice Lala, Johnny Bean, Josh Britton, Justin Hayes, Kurt fifty one fifty. What's up, man? Kai Matthews, Majestic PB and J, Kiet, Mike Neese. <laughs> Nightbot, Quentin James, R2, R3, Locking Nut, Riley, McMaster, Sean Zimmerman, Six Strings and Ten Fingers, Susan Silvestri, Thomas Santiago, Thrash Metal, What's Happening, and Tuba, and if I missed anybody else, Kelly, Justin Hayes, and everybody else that is joining, enjoy tonight. Yes. Have a good time. Yes, we're going to have a great time here. Thank you so much for uh, for tuning in, everybody. So, what do you want to talk about first? You want to talk about uh, carnal knowledge turning turning thirty? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's go over some. Uh, let's go down memory lane for a bit. Okay. I I actually I still have the original cassette that I that I bought and that I that I first heard. Um, mm -hmm. It's in the garage in a tub. Uh, so I couldn't get to it. I couldn't find it. Susan, no. It Susan, no, I didn't. No. <clears throat> top tier. Top tier is nine ninety nine. Always has been. Nine ninety nine. Nine nine. Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. We need Caleb for that one. <laughs> um the man. Yeah. I mean, I've told this story a billion times, but 
Um, well, I have this uh, since we're on the topic of cassettes. It's not it's not the real one. This was a time where I, you know, my brother bought it and I took the long box. He bought the CD, obviously. Yeah. And uh, he, I took the long box and cut it up, which is what I used to do because I couldn't afford my own, you know, uh, stuff at that time and put it on a piece of crap Fuji <laughs> <laughs> cassette. Is that normal or high bias? Um, a lot of it's, I used to listen to the hell out of this thing. It's normal. See? Yeah. Yep. The normal ones, those are, those had more noise, didn't they? Or no, they had less noise. I don't know. What the hell is that? Who knows where the, where the hell this tape for everyday that's music so recordings. Those are the ones that were crap, you know? Okay. Yeah. But see the inside of a long box had that, uh, middle thing to kind of help support it. But I, I used to do that, you know, I used to cut up and tape the, uh, tape it together and make my own little. Oh, I see. Yep. Oh, that's cool. So that's really cool, man. Yeah. Real creative, you know, so, <laughs> that's about, the that's really cool. It. If you asked me to do anything else, it would look like crap, man. But, yeah. but Hey, Frank Spear. Thank you again, man. Frank, Frank, shout out Frank Spear. Yeah. Thank you again. And yeah, feel free. Any, all you guys, you know, there's over 2,000 videos on the channel here. My God. Go back, you know, spin, roll the dice, watch a video, watch, you know, it's all quality stuff. Of course. Leave leave comments on those videos. I get the alerts. I can respond back to you real quick. And it really does help uh, get the older stuff back <laughs> into the suggested area over there on the side of the chat that you're that you see. <laughs> um so frank thank you again so much but yeah as far as carnal knowledge i remember buying the uh well first they did one of those westwood one album premieres from 5150 uh i want to say they did that on friday on that friday i want to say um so i had heard they played almost the entire album on the radio before the record came out. So I heard, I think there was only like a, two songs I hadn't heard or, or something. I don't know. I have the cassette sitting here somewhere. It's not that one. Of the actual broadcast, the Westwood One broadcast? Yeah. Yeah. I had like literally like four different cassettes rolling <laughs> with those tapes that you just showed us. See, you guys recording think that, this you, thing. that you were obsessed or are obsessed with Van Halen. Johnny Bean would have four cassette recorders It's a set up like a control uh you know yeah like a nasa whatever the hell do i have that here i'm looking i got some all. i got and then some how, how would you decide which one to listen to first um well i would like sound you know, would you like go through them and like okay this one's a better recording no i would just do it just to have the the extra just have the backups for bootlegging um, were you planning on bootlegging the uh material johnny <laughs> is that the no. reason no um but uh anyway and this stuff was blasting so i would have like like three different tape decks with speakers all playing all like almost like surround sound around the whole room all and then mono. each <laughs> each one was was <laughs> each one was was recording and then i think i would pause each one during the commercials yeah right and then you're right and, on it right ready for the you get really good, you know, yeah. in radio or on uh, MTV when you're trying to record the latest video, which we'll get to that in a second. Um, you get really good kind of knowing when they're going to come back with the show. So, you know, you, 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 it's, there's a, there's a, a timer to it, mm. you know? So, so uh, anyway, yeah, I, I recorded the whole thing, Carnal Knowledge album premiere, and they played almost the whole record. And then they had the band talking in between songs or actually during the songs. Eddie was playing the guitar. You could hear him playing just acoustically, the, the music man. You could hear the drill. They talk about the drill for pound cake. You could hear him using the drill and stuff. That's my uh, thing for drill. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm, I want to say that was a Friday. That was the, I want to say th June 13. So maybe it wasn't, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it was a Thursday. 
who knows? Anyway, I'm sure it's on Wikipedia or something. Mm-hmm. John Bale. John Bale can find it. So they had the the Carnal Knowledge, Foreign Lawful Carnal Knowledge album premiere. Um, and then I want to say the next day or the day after that was my birthday. And on, on my birthday, uh, I want to say uh, they had the world premiere for Pound Cake, the music video. And I remember thinking it was so cool because, you know, my ber- that was my a present to me was was <laughs> them do- releasing that to MTV. So I saw the very first uh, I woke got up that morning. Airing, yeah, the very first hit record. Airing. Saw the very first airing of that. And the commercial for that was actually pretty cool. And I have it on my Johnny Bean Instagram like from like six, <laughs> seven years ago. If anybody wants to scroll back on my Instagram for six or seven years, you'll find yeah. the original commercial for Pound Cake for MTV. And it was slightly, it was the video, but it, you know, it was all promoted up. So it was cool. Like it had Eddie, it had the da 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 but it had like reverb on it. Like it ended with like, just like, re, uh, like a plate. You know yeah, I mean? it was. I remember it being like hearing the real version and be like, that sounds different. Cause I was like, that part in the commercial was so cool. In the I, commercial, I, I even recorded the commercial and like would watch it over and yeah. over again. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was like, you know, this, you know, coming up. Pound cake, and it's like dunna, 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 and then Sammy sings home, and then it stops, and it just has a plate of reverb going, and and the commercial was kind of if I can, it's on my Instagram. If anybody can dig back and find it, it's on at Johnny Bean Instagram because I I uploaded a lot of that stuff like six years ago, seven years ago. So okay, so that was that was on my on my birthday. Pound cake for your birthday is always good. That's right, R two three, R two R three. Um, and hey, six chick seventy one. Hey now, happy Friday. Hey now, hey. happy Friday. Um, and then I want to say the next the next week. Um, I always thought it was a Monday, but maybe it makes sense if it was a Tuesday. Uh, the album came out mm-hmm. Tuesday, a- and I remember going down to what was called Pickles Records and Tapes, <laughs> <laughs> and buying the cassette and the CD. But the car I was driving only had the cassette slot. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, drove home blasting the, the cassette. And then uh, that was basically my, you know. Entire my, my summer was, was that album. My, yeah. Yeah. That's true. And then, and then what? I don't know. So what, what about, what about you? What's your experience with remembering that record and, well, that and, was uh, that was a great summer. I mean, I think uh, I think Bill and Ted's excellent or Bogus Journey came out that summer, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, unless it was '92, yeah. I'm trying to think. Might have been '92 that I, I can't remember now, but it feels like it was the same summer. But um, no, it was '91 because Van Halen was in rehearsals um, for their tour. I think uh, went around the time Bill and Ted. It was '90. It was '91 because '91, you know. Carl Knowledge came out and the Black Album came out. Mm-hmm. And while the Black Album and her Sandman was uh, debuting, they were showing the commercials for Bogus Journey. So it was that summer. But that, I just remember that being a great summer because, uh, you know, the whole Van Halen thing. And, and my brother had a, had a silver Nissan Pulsar at the time. So he drove us up to Strawberries. It was in Newburgh, New York by the Newburgh Mall. We got the, it, shop? the morning of it coming out. So mine was called pickles. Yours was called strawberries. Strawberries, and then strawberries changed to coconuts. <laughs> after that, um, and now of course it's a restaurant, uh, you know. But um, I just remember driving home, having it cranked, you know. And um, I do remember my neighbors. Um, I don't even want to say their name on here. Maybe what well, it doesn't really matter. But my brother was working, and. I let my neighbors borrow the CD to record it or to dub it, you know? Mm-hmm. My brother almost killed me. He came home, didn't have his Van Halen CD. Oh, this, is like, this is like this is like a, a day or two after it came out. And my brother almost whooped me. The loan my loan my stuff out, my new Van Halen CD and all that stuff. And uh you know, we got it back and uh, 
my brother's inspecting it, you know, <laughs> literally, I, I, I almost remember a magnifying glass coming out, but I'm probably just imagining that because that's how anal he was with, uh, with his stuff. But, um, it's just, it's probably the, it's the first Van Halen album, Van Halen album that came out when I, that I, I was at the age of like realizing what being a fan of like a real fan of something, you know, I was what I was 14 when that came out. Um, and it was, I was like pumped, you know, it was, uh, it was, a great, it was and that's the thing that people aren't realizing young, younger people, I guess I should say, we're actually reminiscing about an album coming out nowadays. They come out and it's like, they just skate by and a lot of, uh, just pick the tracks that you, that you want, or you already have them. Yep. And it's not, it's not like such a huge event. It's not at all. I mean, as, as it was, I'm a, you know, you know, I'm a metalhead and I like fear factory. Their new album came out today. I didn't even know. All of a sudden I'm getting text messages from the guys in the band and they're talking about the new fear factory record. I'm like, well, it's out. I'm like, Oh crap. It is. I like looked for it and it's out on Spotify. I was like, I didn't even know it. And I'm a fan of the band. <laughs> That's the difference. It was literally like an event when your favorite band's album came out back in those days. And Johnny's right, buying a cassette for the car and a CD for the home. You know, because back then you're yeah. right. Like my parents' car is the same thing. It had a tape deck in it. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a didn't have a CD player. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was just it was a huge thing, man. I mean, remembering details about a whole summer because of one album that came out yeah yeah happy friday rock the cd in my old uh i rock, I rock. <laughs> the i rock pound cake blew me away <laughs> never forget that steven booth thank you thank you man so when you when you first started listening to it what was the was there a song that you really remember like clinging to like, oh my God, this song is, you know, just stuck out as like your early favorite, I guess I should say. And then we'll go with the opposite as well. Uh, well, Pound Cake, you already knew because it was on the radio. Yep. You know, it was on the radio and as a single and, you know, the video was out. Um, I want to, I want to say my, my very favorite, um, right out of the gate was judgment day yeah that was that was probably so, one, of, one of one of I mine mean, too i mean that was such uh i mean it, it was it was kind of kind of heavy for van halen at the time yep. you know it had the 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 dun -na 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 -na. yeah the chugging yep the chugging <laughs> does it, it chug? Had, yes it does it had the uh the whoa, 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 you know which is supposed to simulate an earthquake is, is what that is like like the world like Busted oh, apart. There you go. That's what, that's what that is. Um, that's another one of those things where Eddie like kind of came up with something new that nobody ever saw anybody do before. Like mm -hmm. incorporating something like that in a in a riff and in mm -hmm. a song, not just you know doing you know whammy bar gymnastics in the middle of a solo. Wanking. Yeah, not just wanking. Like that has a purpose and actually is is a part of that riff, and that's. That's a super cool thing. That yeah, he, that, yeah you know, it tells a story. Out. Tells a story. Same, same with pound cake. The drill effect is is the sound of a mixer, a blender, mixing up. <laughs> you know? that, well, that's the, what the earthquake one sounds cooler. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, Wado, thank you so much, man. I personally uh, think uh, best three on uh, the album are Judgment Day, Spanked, and Man on a Mission. P.S. Happy birthday, Johnny. Thank you, man. Yeah, happy birthday. I didn't get to uh, personally wish you a happy birthday the other day. So happy, happy belated, Johnny. Thank you. Thank you. It's it's been a, a birthday a uh, couple days. And everybody on Facebook, I will get back to everybody because there was something like like 600 uh what do you call it? Posts and comments and and uh so I, I will get back. They're still rolling in now, actually. <laughs> but I will get back to everybody. Kai Matthews. Thank you, dude. Um, let's see what, okay. So you, you're asking me, uh, judgment day was my favorite. And then what was my, what was a, a least the opposite? Yeah. What was like one of the songs that when you'd listen to the whole CD through, 
You're like, eh. I, I can actually tell you before I bought the CD when I when I was hearing the the album on uh, on the radio for the mm-hmm. album premiere, the very last song they played was "Man on a Mission." That's the one they ended the show with. And I remember when that song started. So they didn't play the album in order then. No, no, they didn't. It was mm-hmm. all 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 mixed up. But huh. when they when they when they started playing that song, I was kind of like, hmm. Like it really wasn't, it wasn't, it was like the first time ever I had heard a Van Halen song and I wasn't totally, like it, it, it didn't do anything for me. Yeah, That's you weren't all. totally. No, no. And, and uh, I was never into that song all these years until uh, a, a Facebook friend of mine, he had, he had won an auction for a dat tape. Mm-hmm. I, I just happen to have one here. On I just happen to have it right here. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. just. <laughs> yeah, that's just a, a, a bad tape. I've never, I don't even know why I have it. Um, probably for some studio thing from years ago that just never, I'm um, blurry. Um, never, never developed. Yeah. There, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so this guy, he, he, uh, he won an auction for, for a dad tape that had belonged to Andy Johns and it was, it was a mix of, of a couple tracks for the live right here, right now album. And the, the two tracks on this dad tape are in and out and man on a mission recordings for the live record. And 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 one of them is is a, a version of "Man on a Mission," and it's it's uh, instrumental. There's no vocals over it. And when I first heard that, and this was only not even that long ago, maybe five, four, five, six years ago, seven years ago, that I'd heard that, and that was the first time I, I had heard I'd listened to the song, and it really, you know, without the singing, it really. It it changed the way I looked at the song for some reason, you know, if that makes sense. Like I, no, it, I, I liked it more without the vocals. Nothing against the vocals, but it just did something here. And it it was a different take. Just give me a different, a di- yeah, different spin. Almost, you almost like hear it. a different groove from it now, or, or vibe or something. Um, mm-hmm. And it's funny you say that because the same thing with me with, uh, um. Oh my God! Job you. What's the the Steinberger song? Pleasure Dome. Pleasure Dome. I was never a huge fan of that song. I always loved the solo and stuff, but something yeah. about that song on the album, I was just always like, I was like, eh, some sometimes a skip, you know. <laughs> and then where's that? Sh- and sh- then sh- after sh- hearing put that up. the live version going into Alex's solo. When they play it instrumentally, I was like, "Whoa, this is I like this." And then it made me kind of like, like same thing with yeah. you with "Man on a Mission." Yeah. I heard it in a different way, and all of a sudden, I was like, "This song is this song is awesome. This is a really cool song." Mm-hmm. Um, so that's I guess that might be the one where it took me a while to dig it, dig it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one, yeah, the the two of them I think that really stuck out at first for me, Judgment Day, obviously. And then, um, what we'll call it? Oh my God! What is wrong with me tonight? I should have the track listing pulled up because I can't. My mind is going yeah, on me. Uh, I'm doing that. I'm doing that right now. Psst, hey, come on, man! Wake up. <laughs> Dream is over. Dream is over, dude. Like the riff in that. You know, we've we've mentioned it on the on the yeah. Strategy Night Late Show. The chorus is the weak part of that song because it goes from kind of being like, oh, I don't think so. Well, I know we've we've had this you know disagreement, but I feel like. It, it has this edge to it, this attitude. Uh, and then the chorus comes in and it's all like, ah, uh, you know, like all, but that, you know, but happy. that's, the, but that's Van Halen. No, I, I that, know that's, that. that's, that's a total, total signature sound. And it's of... not just Sammy either. No, it's not no. just everybody blames Sammy or, Oh yeah, you put the, you know, cheesy blah, blah. No, it's everybody <laughs> for the chorus in the dream. It's over. The dream is over. Um, now the one song <laughs> before we uh I'm gonna continue the poo-poo here, but <laughs> one song on that album that I cannot listen to anymore is Top of the World. I just it's 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 always a skip 
Oh, it is. That's my very few Van Halen songs I skip, and that's one of them. Their opening riff is cool. It's a cool song, but I don't know if it's just that I've heard it so much and that it's it's mm -hmm. very poppy and just happy. And well, it has been thirty years. It has. Got, been, so I've we, probably heard it a few times. We got to remember you, you guys. Hey, Cameron. Cameron Brown is here. You guys yeah. got to remember. We bought this record. Literally, well, I can speak for myself. I bought this the second it was released. Mm -hmm. I heard the album premiere of it 30 years ago. So I've been living with these songs for 30 years, even though I'm 20. Well, I just had my birthday. Um, You're 26. All right, you guys, I'm, I'm going to say. It came out three I, years I, after you were born. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come clean with you guys, okay? I'm in my 40s, okay? I'll, I'll admit that, but that, that's all. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm somewhere in between 49 and 13. <laughs> so between, between zero and 50. <laughs> there you go. See, make a GIF. Make a GIF. See what I just did there? You can actually drop the link of this of this show into that and make a GIF at Giphy. Use hashtag at use just put Johnny Bean TV or set or let's send it to me. And there you go. That, see, that's how that works. Man, top of the world. I get yeah. it. I get. I get it. Um, yeah, I get it. But but for me, especially that one. I mean, they all they all do. But but that you know, it 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 just it takes you back to 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 that time that summer. All those songs. Like here's something I don't know if I've ever said this, but when I when I'm when I if I hear that song and I'm in the car and this is 30 years of this I've been driving I guess for 30 years, okay. Every time the solo for that when Eddie does the 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 dive bomb part, mm -hmm. the dun -dun 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 I do that every time I hear it on the steering wheel. I've always done that for 30 years. I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> Nerds. <laughs> Nerds. <laughs> And a little trivia. I know a lot of people already know this, and we've mentioned this before, but Judgment Day is allegedly the last song that he that Eddie recorded with the 5150. Mm -hmm. Supposedly. Supposedly, yeah. Top of the world is just a longer ending of Jump. We got a text from... Uh, from I'll, I'll say it. The air code 617 sent us a text. <clears throat> Sixth one seven. I think. Is it? Anyway. Yeah, yeah, we get text messages. Oh, yeah, Man on a Mission or Dream is Over is some of Ed's best rhythm work since Dirty Movies. That's another text. Same number. I think. I think. Rick. Rick Powell. I think that's Rick Powell. Um... And I guess I'll I'll go ahead and mention this, and then we'll get to False Flag's comment. Um, that phone number right there, where you can send us text messages, like Rick is doing. Uh, I think Chris, Chris is sending text messages. That number is going away. They're that the service that I use is deleting. <laughs> They're that's what sucks. A couple days uh, ago, Google, like Google Voice, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like all, all this stuff that I use, that that's what sucks about, about the internet is you really get into using an app or using something. And it's great. And then they either change or they go away and you're just. Well, dude, G Google's notorious for doing that. Everything that they've, that they've uh, done, if it doesn't like explode. They, they oh, Goog Google. Uh, uh, what was Hangouts. that? Hangouts. Hangouts went away, but now yeah, you gotta, they, you gotta, they you made that video them. game system a couple years ago, and it didn't take off, so they instantly abandoned it? it. Google's version of Facebook, where where you added people to your circles. Yes. Yep. What was that called? Oh, I thought I'm, I'm thinking Hangouts. That wasn't Hangouts. That wasn't uh, Hangouts. That was Google. Uh, I Sorry. thought it was. Gr I thought it was great. I was on there. Oh, I know you were. You I love everything. You're on everything. <laughs> yeah. In the chat, what was that called? Google. It was Google's version. Of, go, thank you, Jim Han. Any relation, Jim Hannon? What? Wait, I just lost it. You're on Facebook. Watch Google this. Plus. Jim, Jim Hannon. Google Plus. Oh, that's that's my cousin. 
<laughs> He's also downstairs. <laughs> What's up, Jimmy? Hey, welcome, man. Yeah, Google Plus. I thought Google Plus was great, but it it was only it was a bunch of nerds. Nerds. You know. Thank you, Randy Price. Yeah, Google Plus. Hal Face, Google Plus. I liked it. Well, there was another one. No, that wasn't Google. Never mind. There was a, another uh, of those Facebook or Twitter clones. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think Carl oh. Knowledge might be definitely from the Sammy era. I think it's um, their most mature album. Um, there's something about it. There's, there's a lot of every song is, is totally different from the from the previous one. Um, and, but it's a very at the same time it's a very cohesive record, um, and I've, I've always thought that it's just like one of those records that is very. They had a they had it's almost like they had a vision, and they they uh, achieved it. They really just I don't know how, what else to say about it. <laughs> mm hmm. And I think yeah. actually. I'm sorry if if I changed my other brand, which who knows what is going to happen here. Are those are those pictures here? No, they're not. I don't have them. I, there, there's some pictures of them during during the recordings outside with Ted Templeman and Andy Johns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't have them. We've showed them though, probably on a on a Saturday night. Uh, we got this one that Sammy posted today. <laughs> What's going on down there? Yeah, good day, yeah, man. Sammy yeah. said something about Eddie. Want uh, Sammy bought that jacket, and Eddie wanted it. Come on, there we go. That was great. Hey, look, never was skip <clears throat> like like the uh, picture as well. <laughs> so he says yeah. uh i had just bought sammy says i had just bought that jacket it was hand woven out of old garments taken apart string by string and rewoven into a jacket it was uh it was crazy expensive but i had to have it eddie wanted it bad and that's why i'm holding him back that's what he said <laughs> that picture was backstage in japan uh the shows were amazing i believe we did 10 nights in tokyo on the F-U-C-K tour. Wow. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny when I see when I see that picture or any of the uh, the the uh, the insert pictures from that record because I had I had some of those uh, promotional displays that you would get the big cardboard cutout things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where where, the, where pickles or or strawberries or wherever would have these huge <laughs> displays set up and then they would have all, all the cds and all the tapes sitting on them mm -hmm. and i had two of those i had two of them that these stores had given me because i was i was always the first one in hey can i have this can i have this you know the posters can i have these you know and i i think i actually hey peter i don't know if you're watching this man hey dude um i sold actually a lot of my promotional stuff to, to van halen store uh, years ago, years and years and years ago, I sold them like all these posters that I had. Uh, so, so if any of you guys had bought a Van Halen Carnal Knowledge poster, promo poster over the years, it might have, uh, it might have belonged to me at the time. Oh, Peter, thank you so much, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're watching, I don't know if you are. Heaviest Van Halen song. Well, I think. There's no argument that the heaviest Van Halen riff is the Unchained riff, um, right? Is that really heaviest? an argument? The heaviest, heaviest, the Unchained riff is the heaviest Van Halen riff. Um, I mean, you got like Romeo Delight, you know, after the after the harmonic tapping intro, the. There's that one. Mm -hmm. Loss of control is heavy as hell. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, 
I mean, you you can look at a lot of their stuff as being heavy. You can look at the the. I mean, going back to 1978. Imagine your first time hearing their cover of "You Really Got Me." That would have been considered heavy for mm -hmm. back then. You know, here, here and here and uh, here and that. Um, well, on fire. On fire. Heavy. That's kind of kind of tricky because I, I, it's like yeah, some of it is kind of heavy, but but when you compare it to, let's say like bands like Gizmachi. Oh yeah, different kind of it's, heavy. It's, I mean, <laughs> it's not really heavy, but well. I mean that unchained riff, man. That that's a heavy ass riff, you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's heavy as hell. Um, mm -hmm. you know, you think of like the on fire riff, the uh, not even the main one, you know, the uh, like the bridge riff before the like like that's that's cool as hell, man. Yeah. And and there's a Dimebag actually took some influence from the verse riff of on fire you know eddie does like the slides you know he's like sliding up and down like the low string mm -hmm. um there's a. Uh, am trying to oh man what the hell album is it on from pantera where Dimebag literally does the same type of thing um boner jams would know this but he probably thought that Dimebag made it up meanwhile go back to uh you know van halen one in 1978 and eddie's doing something like that that again another thing that eddie did that nobody had done before like that you know and so a bunch of people were mentioned in mean street i i don't know I, I don't think any of those riffs are heavy heavy they're more of they more have like a groovy almost yes. like a um swing to to it you know the yeah not really it's, like, it, it's it's like heavy funk yeah is what is what a lot of fair, fair warning is very funky <laughs> well there's a there's still a lot of hangover from that uh you know from it's almost like borderline disco in a couple of those songs man like think of the mean street drum you know drum mm -hmm. beat <laughs> yeah you know there's a lot of that still a lot of stuff on there i don't every a lot of people are saying the mean street riff i wouldn't i don't consider that heavy i'm talking about something that would border heavy metal <clears throat> mm -hmm. <laughs> this Jay Hannon version of Mean Street is their heaviest. Well, thanks. I don't know if that's a compliment, but I'm taking it as one. <laughs> yeah. Rick is saying Mean Street Unchained, the intro to Don't Tell Me What Love Can Do, are all heavy. Yeah. That's true. That's true, man. Uh, so, yeah, for me, heaviest Van Halen song. In my opinion, uh, oh gosh, There's Randy something. Price is saying Eddie called humans being the metal song. Mm -hmm. That's heavy. That's definitely a heavy one. Well, I think it's more the the drums have that with that you know double time type of bat, 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 mm -hmm. bat, bat, kind of has that pickup. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the riff too. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff, man. I mean, Eddie he had a tendency to teeter sometimes on that uh you know heavy metal esque type of thing. I remember Sammy when they mentioned uh with the Monsters of Rock, you know, talking about bands like Metallica, and he mentioned, well, hey, you know, we we can keep up right with those guys. You know, we'll get songs like Get Up and stuff, which, you know, it's got the, you know, again, the drums to get back at, you know, double bass. Cruising the whole time. I was listening to that the other day on my on my iPod. I've got uh, 5150 and then I've got some, they're not official uh, karaoke versions of the songs. It's just somebody, you know, took the vocals kind of out with filters, kind of, mm -hmm. you know. But you can still, like, if you listen, you can still hear Sammy singing, but because of the reverbs, the vocals are out of sync with the music. Yeah. You know, it's like late because you're hearing it from the, re you're hearing the tail end of the reverb, like the tail. 
Yep. Um, but uh, I was listening to uh, Summer Nights without the vocals, you know, somewhat. And it was cool. I was blasting it on the freeway coming home. This would have been Monday, Monday night. Um, and uh, False Flag, Get Up from 50 and 50 is just f- furious. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Furious? It is. That That's heavy. That's heavy. Fast, yeah. That, that's heaviness. Brendan Buttcheeks is here. Hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> Randy Price, I think Don't Tell Me is pretty heavy. It is. It is. Yeah. Brendan, hey, man. It's Yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. And Sherman Callahan, thank you so much for the stars on Facebook, man. Sherman. This just made me think of something, dude. You know, a lot of those 80s hard rock bands, right? Whenever they would try to write something heavier, you know, a lot of times it came out sign- sounding corny, like corny heavy. Mm-hmm. Van Halen never, like Eddie never did that. Like when he wrote a heavy riff, it was heavy, but it wasn't mm-hmm. like, it didn't sound like he was trying to write something heavy just for the sake of writing something heavy. It never, it was never corny. It was never cheesy. Whereas a lot of those bands back in the, in those, you know, eighties and early nineties, when they tried to do something a little more aggressive, it came out. Ugh. Like, well, why? Don't, don't do that. <laughs> it's just, whereas Eddie, man, whatever he wrote was just, it still <laughs> sounds like Van Halen. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, a lot of people don't know this. Eddie wrote a lot of stuff on the piano first and would apply it to the guitar. Yeah. Eddie's main instrument was the piano. I would say his entire musical career, it was piano. And that, that's why I'm, I'm hopeful to hear you know more of his piano stuff, if anything gets put out eventually, any, any recordings, demos. Um. I would love to hear, hear that stuff. And small mouth guy. Thank you, man. <laughs> Best of both worlds, too. Yeah. That, that's heavy. Best of both. Yeah, that's that's almost like a uh like ACDC, I think. I think AC yeah. I think ACDC was the inspiration for Best of Both Worlds for that riff. Probably. I just got a a, pri- a message from Cameron Brown. I don't know if he wants me to read it, but I'm gonna read it anyway. When I mentioned about, you know, Van Halen <clears throat> never wrote like a heavy riff and it sounded cheesy or a heavy song that sounded kind of corny. He goes, up for breakfast and learning to see disagree with your last statement. <laughs> I, I don't even include that in my Van Halen, uh, you know, <laughs> discography or history. It was, I I can't listen to those songs, man. The the reunion ones, the, the what was it, three songs they did with Sammy? In 04? Three or like four? Was it? was it only two? It was only up for breakfast. Oh, it's about time. Yeah, so, so three it's, songs. It's about time, learning to see an up for breakfast. Those are heavy. About time is definitely... Dun, 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 that, that's heavy. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to think. What was the first one I heard out of those? It was either uh, up for breakfast or... Uh, what was the other one? Learning to see? No, the other. Uh, it's about time. It's about time. It was either up for breakfast or about time. And I remember again. What again? I I heard them on the radio. Yeah, they did. They did a radio special again with with. Uh, I think the band might have been talking about the songs, I, and then they played the songs. And then I see by this time though it was two thousand four, so I I didn't have a bunch of cassette players going. I had uh, a feed into my computer. With with my DAW open, running, you know the track, recording, you know digital. It's awesome. See, I mean, see how it changed in three years, or uh, sorry, thir- I guess I say thirteen years. <laughs> um, yeah, those songs for some reason, man, I just, I was like, man, I was super pumped to. I'm like, Sammy's back, Sammy's back. Here we go. And then I was like, oh man, you know, wow. What are you gonna? I do? like, I like them. Of course you do. I liked him. <laughs> it's Van Halen. I I love Van Halen. 
everything everything they've done i'm i'm a a fan of i mean there's nothing because it's all edward it's all it's all eddie and he's just as as uh as a, a musician not just guitar but just as a, as an inspiration to me he's definitely a huge definitely isn't that funny if if uh if there was no eddie van halen we wouldn't we wouldn't know each other johnny <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't know a lot of it's it's funny man my facebook is divided into three different groups it's van halen fans duran duran fans and the police fans a lot of them a lot of the people from my facebook and a lot of people came over from myspace mm -hmm. i remember myspace i had a huge well and then my my own stuff you know and, and you know, being a, a musician yourself, being a professional musicians as we are, <laughs> you know, it's you know, you get fans, you know, we people, you know what I mean? So you yeah. get people in in the different groups and and uh, but as far as far as um my personal Facebook page, anytime I see somebody on there, I can be like, oh, that person i know them because of van halen i know them because of the police i know them because of uh spice girls i know them because of you know whatever they have them, duran duran or whatever these yep. days i mean i listen to so much stuff now it, it's it's uh there's so, so much uh diversity over there um i'm almost at five thousand friends my god I, imagine, I'm, no, I, imagine actually knowing 500 5, people I'm right below 5,000 friends on there. So I'd rather have five friends than 5,000 friends. Mm -hmm. That's how I, that's how I am. <laughs> so speaking of carnal knowledge, since we're still on it, I think maybe 93 was my first concert that I was ever allowed to go to. Man. And it was, it was Van Halen. So it was obviously the second or third leg, whatever the hell, how many times they came around for that, that tour. Mm hmm. So again, the same type of thing. That was my first experience seeing a show live. And it was my favorite band at the pinnacle of, you know, I'm what was I? Uh, so I was, what, 16? Damn, my parents made, it, made me wait till I was 16 to see a live concert. Jesus. On anyway. your own? Did you go well, yeah, on your it, own? My, my parents drove me and my friend Anthony, but yeah, they dropped us off. Um, thank, thank you, False Flag. See, see you, man. Have a good night. Thank and, you again uh, for all your support, False Flag. Thank you, thank you. And it was just cool, man. You know, like they were awesome. They opened up with Mine All Mine. And I said this before, the actual show, it's from Middletown, New York at the Orange County Speedway. Uh, and it's on, that's, that actual show is on YouTube. A bootleg mm -hmm. of it and it's actually a, a pretty good bootleg mm -hmm. Are, is this going to take us into other half van hagar other half yeah um for those of you because this this is something i i can uh i i can relate to what you're talking about i'll go ahead and share let's see tab but it Please was be that one there we go there we go there we go. So this week, maybe just like two days ago, I don't know. Uh, Sammy Hagar announced they have a, an account on Instagram called Van Hagar Other Half. And they're going to be sharing rare footage from the Van Hagar years, which which is awesome. We, we, we love this stuff. Um, but the first was it the first thing they put out? Yeah, yeah. Sammy talking about what it's going to be. Sam, Sammy's talking about it. Mike's talking about it. But this right here, there was footage of them playing, is it Best of Both Worlds, maybe? No, it's Dreams. Oh, Dreams. Okay, oh, okay. yeah, it says Dreams. There we go. I think <laughs> there was Best of Both Worlds in, in the other previous ones. Anyway, that footage, I was at that show. This, oh, you this was that at, one? Really? Yeah, yeah. This was at Shoreline Amphitheater in Mountain View, California. And... The cool thing about Shoreline is they would have these huge screens. So if you're at the lawn, it's still cool no matter where you are because it's huge screens where you could watch, you know, it's like you're watching the band on TV. And so anyway, so this to me, this looks like uh, the, a recording 
of that show, like like the screen view of of the uh, of that show. But yeah, I was at that show, and I, I'm. It's very cool because just to think, you know, most likely I was watching, you know, watching Eddie the entire show. You know. Oh yeah, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just it's so cool. So cool to see uh, footage of a, of a show that I was at, you know, so many, yeah. how many, one, two, three, where eight, no, not 18, 20, 20. <laughs> yeah, dude, 20, 20, 28, 28 years, Jesus, 28 man. years ago. That's crazy. Well, Keith Campbell is saying, Jay, you may have been real close to me at the Orange County Fairgrounds show. I was in front of Eddie with crutches, so nobody mobbed around me. Um. It was our first show, our first concert that we were allowed to go to, right? Mm-hmm. So we didn't know how hot it gets in the, you know, when you get close as close as close can be to the stage. So yeah, when Vince Neal took the stage, we were down in it, man. We were like, I don't know, maybe 10 rows of people. Um, if you're looking at the stage... To the, we were to the left in front of Steve Stevens, right? So we watched mm-hmm. virtually the entire Mo- uh, Motley Crue, Jesus, the entire uh, Vince Neil show from down in the crowd. But then, as soon as they were done playing, man, it got so packed. And they, you know, they had the the bouncers, the security out there, and it was hot. I forget it was either July or August, and it was hot, man. It was sunny. It was hot, and they had the hoses out. The hose. They had the hose out. They had the hoses <laughs> out, and they were spraying the crowd, trying to keep everybody cool. But it was so hot, they were like lifting people up out of the crowd to get people air and stuff. And we were just yeah. like, "Oh my god!" Like we, and it got so packed after they finished before Van Halen came out. We July fifth. There was it really July fifth. Wow, man. Um, we we got out. We couldn't handle it anymore. You know, we kind of blew our load, so to speak. Um, at our first concert, we couldn't like be in the pit for, uh, for Van Halen. So we kind of, if you remember where the, with the fairgrounds, they had that main kind of entrance with a gate and they had this garbage can, you know, or multiple garbage cans. We were like standing on garbage cans or something uh, (laughs) to see, but it was, uh, it was still a cool experience. Nevertheless, nevertheless, of course, but, uh, You know, we, we, we were shot, man. We were like, I, we couldn't believe the lack of oxygen that is, that is in the crowd when you're at a concert, <laughs> when there's, you know, 10,000 people there. It was, it was insane. It was insane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's so cool to see, to see that, that footage though, for me, because like I said, I was there and, and that really is my favorite. Like if, if I think to, back to any, well, the last, the suck at the last show I saw in 2015 was was amazing because I was ten rows back from Edward, and mm-hmm. I'd never, I had met him, I had talked to him a few a year before then, but I had never been that close while when he was he, actually when he's doing his when he's doing when his he's playing, play, yeah. and I so in 2015 I was just like. I can't believe this. I can't believe how I'm seeing him do that. And just how easy looks like he plays looks like nothing. You know, there's a difference between watching somebody on TV, growing up, watching somebody on TV, do it or watching somebody on your computer screen, do it. But when you see that person literally, you know, 20, 30 feet away or even closer, it's just, it's a surreal thing. It's like, you know, and, and we've done it, not, not with that many people, but I'm saying you know, we've played live before and a lot of people in the chat have and all that stuff. But when you see somebody that is the reason, one of the reasons why you play guitar or a fan of music, that style of music, when you see that person, you know, that close to you playing, it's a, it's a, it's a weird thing. And it's very, almost like a surreal experience, like an out of body experience. Um, Mm-hmm. especially cool. yeah especially if, if you're used to seeing seeing that band or that music musician play on on a tv screen you know on youtube on a phone screen mm-hmm. well take what we're doing here imagine if you and i went on tour and did this live 
what we're doing here, sitting in chairs with mics, you know, sitting and having our, our fans, our friends come out and see us. It'd be the same deal. Jay and Johnny. I'm like, I can't <laughs> believe how bad those guys stink. You know? <laughs> no, I showered today. I swear. I didn't. Um, you know, or when I, when I met Rob Johnson at NAMM, you know, I'd known him for, for 20 something years as a, a, a as a computer screen person mm -hmm. seeing him in person that you know that that same deal same same thing but definitely definitely when it comes to musicians van halen it's it's uh it's magical and it's, it's just it's unbelievable that we're never gonna see we're never gonna see that again and we're, we're very lucky not even just just that as far as van halen or eddie but I think the um, the scale of the way concerts were back then. Mm -hmm. You know, I know there's these there's festivals and stuff, and people still go to live concerts, but it's different. It yeah. really is different, man. When you know, everybody's got a phone now, everybody's filming it or on or looking at their phone while this concert's going on, and people just don't lose themselves in life anymore they they lose themselves in something else um so no we can't we can't swear on on friday show she she says johnny can i hear you once say f sakes maybe tomorrow night <laughs> maybe tomorrow night you'll have to uh come back who said that uh who said chief. That? Chief. <laughs> well i mean i i really don't i really don't swear on these shows um because Only if John Biel, if John Biel makes Johnny mad, then then he'll uh, he'll let one slip. I I did that one time on on one of these. I that is true. Okay, maybe a couple of times. But... I have the tally. I have the tally over there on the wall. <laughs> there's just there's just two lines. Two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really, you know, if it doesn't need if it doesn't need to be, it's like we, it's like why. You know. Um, so your so your first um Van Halen concert was what? Was uh November fifth, nineteen eighty eight, oh eight one two. Okay. So you saw them before the Carnal Knowledge tour. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that that was that was crazy. Um you know, see, seeing the uh, the live right here right now VHS every day after school. Yeah, seeing that and then and then seeing them live. Yeah, it was incredible. Even though I was like I was like way in the back. You know, I had the uh, the magnifying. What do you call it? The <laughs> binoculars. Yeah. So I could see them, and of course, I'm watching Eddie the entire time. I mean. You know, I, I a couple key moments, three three key moments I can remember, um, was him throwing cigarettes down into the. There was a pit in front of him, so there was the crowd. There, there's, there's uh, the press, the press pit. You know where they would take the pictures, and and then, so he would throw the cigarettes down there. So I remember watching him toss them down like over past the stage on the ground. I remember, I remember that. I remember the very last song, him jumping around, doing you know those kicks they would do, where he would like do those kicks across the stage. Yeah, he does them in little guitars. He, they would do them during uh, uh, when him and Sam would play together. He would be doing them. I remember him doing those and going over to Mike's side of the stage. There was a, a like a, a table, a little tray table set up with a bottle of Jack sitting on it. He went over there and he, he kicked it over. I remember on purpose. Well, yeah, it was the, it was the end of the show. It was the end. Oh, okay. Um, so I remember him doing that, and then I remember him taking his guitar, the fifty one fifty guitar, off, and throwing it clear across the stage, like up in the air. And then an arm came out and caught it. That that would have been Zeke. Oh my Zeke Clark God. caught it and then took it. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I mean, that was that was a show. Imagine um, throwing your main guitar. Clear across the stage, man. God. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I mean, they're 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 well rehearsed. I mean, they know exactly. I know what, that, but so are professional athletes, and yeah, there's still misfires. I mean, what was the show where he was still standing on the cable or something? He went to throw it and it got stuck, or the strap was was. Oh, I remember what what show was that? And it hit the ground, and he was like, Montreal, "Oh no, Montreal yeah. '86." Yeah, yeah, he's like, "Oh no." <laughs> <laughs> Man. Well, Cameron Brown asks, maybe that's how the headstock broke off. Supposedly, this this is this isn't, I don't think, known to be true, but isn't the rumor that like he and Alex had an argument or something, and Eddie like threw his guitar at him and it either hit the floor or hit the wall, and that's how the headstock broke. That's the story I, I heard. Who knows if it's true? Who knows? Maybe we'll never know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to curse all the freaking time. Yeah, Destroyer, that's right. Yeah, I do. You know how hard <laughs> it is for me not to curse on these things? Mm-hmm. I'm the opposite. I, I've been doing these things for so long where I don't do it, it's fine. Once once the cam- once the cameras go off, then... Phil, then Florin, Florin, Phil, fuck em. You know? I mean, Jay will tell you. Before or after these things, yeah, they, they, they slide, but... But, um... It's just, who knows? Uh, yeah, you know. Uh, so what? What? Um, anyway, we're talking about the the Hagar. Oh yeah, um, uh, other half Van Hagar, other half. So again, so that's an Instagram account. Can we play audio from that? Like not 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 music audio, but Sammy talking about carnal knowledge or no? <laughs> There is there's music behind it. No. There's no music behind it. Is 30 years old. Unbelievable how the time flies. That's all he's doing. Some of the great Can I can I play that or no? Uh I mean you just did, so. Well, you want me to play the whole thing. <laughs> it's not going to it's not going to flag, right? That's that's tricky. That's tricky. No, go ahead. Go ahead. We'll see what happens. Oh, there's a new post too. Yeah. About run around, but I'll, I'll I'll play this one. Wow, for an awful color, Orange is thirty years old. Unbelievable how the time flies. Some of the greatest memories I have about that record is that we took our time. That was the longest we ever took between records, and it gave me time to think about lyrics and to refine them. And what about what if he curses? Huh? What yeah. If he, no. what, just, no, that's fine. Okay. Not just throw things together. Like, you know, um, some of the earlier stuff, we were under such pressure to get it done and get out on tour. Um, you know, I had to throw some lyrics together. <laughs> but, you know, right now, a song like that, which took really the whole year to write in its own way because Eddie and I hadn't put that music to those lyrics. And once that came together, uh, we had a song like Right Now, which... You know, without that time, probably wouldn't have happened. It, it would have not made the record. But anyway, you know, Ray Boom Boom Mancini being involved and coming up with telling me what foreign law, what fuck means, you know, foreign lawful current knowledge. And it, just all the little things that made that record, to me, one of the greatest Van Halen records ever. Certainly from my era. All right. Okay. Enjoy it. 30 years, baby. See, I, I rank Carl Knowledge as the second best uh, Hagar era album. Fifty One Fifty. You, I mean, that has magic. You could. That's just energy, mm-hmm. magic, uh, everything that you want an album to have, a, a rock and roll album to have that has it. Um, but Carl Knowledge, I think, is second on my list of uh, from the Hagar. Um, so. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I I I I grew up um well we were talking about buying buying albums. Carnal Knowledge was the first album that I knew exactly the day that it was going to be released and I bought it the second that they opened the door. Carnal Knowledge was the first. 0812 I was I was shocked when I walked into the store and saw it. Like I had no idea that 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 record was was coming out or that or that it had come out maybe. Mm-hmm. maybe 
Um, I remember seeing all the uh, the the ads in Rolling Stone magazines for all the stuff back in the day because I had a Rolling Stone uh, subscription, and they would have these full page ads. Oh, you eight one two, you know, it's entire like like black with their their faces yep. and. And you know the carnal knowledge, you know it was all actually for for that was the one of them where they're all behind the mic singing. Yeah, they're all around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, fifty one fifty. What was that one? It might have been the uh, the the guy holding the uh, the atlas. Um, but yeah, oh eight one two was the first. I remember walking into the uh, the, the mall, walking into whatever the little records shop was called i don't probably even know. So, oh it's uh, oranges right or pineapples what <laughs> i don't it wasn't it was i don't think it was one of those i have no sam, idea but sam goody the wall yeah like a sam goody type of yeah. type of thing and i walk by i see the the cd long box oh eight one two and i'm like huh what? Like, no, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a brand new fan. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking now. I had no idea that there was a new record at all. I'm thinking about how shocked I was to see that. I couldn't, couldn't believe it. Grabbed it, bought it, you bought the it, grabbed it, and walked out. Ran out of the store. I'm still on the run. <laughs> now, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, got it. And back in those days, like we we're sitting, talking and for carnal knowledge, you buy the tape, you buy the CD, you buy each one. You know, these days, you know, you download it, you know, the second it's released, you you order the the, the now vinyls back. So you buy the vinyl. Oh, yeah, I, I buy the vinyl, too. So you walk it up, you walk out of there with three copies of the same thing. You know, mm -hmm. tape, CD, vinyl a trick and and uh i remember listening to the tape in the car of course i remember the first time hearing mono mine just being blown away hearing that and i'm thinking i was totally shocked to see the record at all so i'm thinking i hadn't heard anything from it hmm. at all which might i mean this is a long time ago so maybe maybe uh no, actually, When It's Love wouldn't have been out because they filmed the When It's Love video on tour for Monsters of Rock during the summer. What was the first single from that album? Black and Blue. Who was chose the first that? single? But there was no video. It was just it was released as a, as as a single. Okay, so I'm thinking I had no clue at all that this was coming out. Had heard nothing from it. And we're talking eight one two. But uh, was listening to the tape, being blown away. And then immediately driving and buying a CD player so I could listen to the album on CD. Because I didn't have a CD player yet at that point. So I spent, you know, the 200 bucks on a CD player, whatever that was. Just for no, I have it more. I bet like three, four hundred, whatever a single CD player was that the remote was at the time in 88. Like a Sony? There wasn't a Sony. It, it was. It would have been uh, some generic Audio Technica or a um, Techniques well, or something. That's crap. Radio Shack. Yeah, it would have been some 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 kind of something. Uh, but yeah, I remember hearing that on on uh, on the on the 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 uh, CD, and then the CD had a bonus track as well. So I remember uh, uh, hearing that and being like, "Wow, that that's cool." I didn't hear that in the car on the way home. Yep. You know, because I was listening to the cassette. Um, but yeah, yeah. So anyway, anyway, uh, foreign lawful call knowledge was turned thirty, man. Uh, yesterday, I guess that was the first Van Halen album. I knew exactly the day and time that that was being released. Grabbed it. The anticipation of a new album coming out. That was the first mm -hmm. experience. I think that's kind of what, yeah, you know, we're both kind of talking about. Is it was our the first album, ninety one that came out that we both had like, like, Oh my God, you know, you had that. Your, it was a big deal and that, that we cared about. Yes. That we knew Anything what was going else. on and we understood what was going on. Yep. Yeah. For, for us yep. at, at, at our, at, at, at our age, mm -hmm. you know, cause I know a lot of you guys, if a lot of you guys, if you're a little older than us, you know, you had the early, you know, you, 
you've you've done all this you know many times before but that was our first let us know actually in the chat we we've got 90 90 something people watching us in the chat what was what was the first album that, that you bought where you you anticipated where you knew it was coming out you waited in line maybe at the store at pickles or strawberries or cucumbers or midnight madness because i know a lot of uh yeah the bigger record stores i know like for especially like the black album from metallica that's walmart when, that's what that's I, like I, a, I huh that's like a walmart type of thing where where <laughs> stuff where walmart's 24 hours so people line up at walmart to get something mm -hmm. you know that was so cool it really was an experience and it sucks that we really can't you know go through that again i try did i tell you this when uh, a different kind of truth came out in 2012 i tried to get my brother all pumped up to do it right so this was like maybe probably about three weeks or two weeks before it came out and i don't think it leaked yet or maybe it had or a couple songs leaked and i was trying to avoid it i was like all right i'm gonna wait until this thing comes out I'm going to go to the store. So I remember calling my brother up. I'm like, dude, why don't we do, like make it like old school like we used to, man? Let's wake up on Tuesday, whatever the hell the date was that the album came out or comes out. <laughs> and I'm like, we'll go to, we'll drive up to Best Buy. We'll buy it, you know, like old times. And he's like, well, isn't it going to leak soon? I was like, man, it was a, he, he wasn't into it. And I was kind of bummed. He wasn't into it. So uh, that was kind of it. You know? Yeah, <laughs> he's not as he's not as it's weird because he's the reason why I listen to the music I listen to, not the heavy metal stuff, but you know the Van Halen and Rush and stuff. Like he got me into liking the stuff that I listen to. If it wasn't for him influencing me in this way, who knows what I would listen to right now? It might be rap music, you know, for all God, for all I know. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it was kind of it was kind of a bummer, you know, when he was like, nah. I don't want to do that. It's like, damn, man. <laughs> Come on. So we got some, uh, let's see, Majestic PB&J Cat says, Go ahead and read those. Euthanasia was the first album that I anticipated coming out. I'll be right back. That's pretty cool. Um, Bozik says, Balance. I cut class all day to listen to it. I skipped school for Balance as well. Uh, I was given a copy of Carnal Knowledge and live right here right now in 92 or 93. And that's how I became a Van Halen fan. Jeff Davidson says, Women and Children First was his. Six Chick 71 says 84. Uh, wow, we got a lot of uh, Van Halen 2 says Keith Campbell. Uh, Thrash Metal says the Slayer bootleg double vinyl misprint from 85 Holland with the naked lady on back. I'm, I'm assuming that's the one he's uh, talking about. Maybe? No, I, I don't think he's. What? Jay Turner says, Women and Children First, All Dave, All Night, 84. What else do we got here? Um, and for some reason, the chat just skipped way ahead. I was scrolling back here. Um, Steve, Steve Carmichael said, I remember Notley Cruz Theater of Pain was coming out, and I called the record store each week and asked if it was there yet. And eventually they said yes. So you're talking before, like, you could check on the internet. Oh, when's that album come out? Oh, okay, cool. Uh, CK says Rush Signals, freaking great record. Uh, Music Therapy Laz has to go. Good night. See it on our tomorrow night, maybe. Um, let's see. Christopher Live Sawa says ACDC's Flick of the Switch in '83. That was his first one that he was excited about. Um, Johnny hates Rush. That should be that should be your new band name, Johnny Hates Rush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cover Rush songs, but like horribly. Uh -huh. Well, you know, that is a band. What, Johnny Hates Rush? There's a band called Johnny Hates Jazz. Oh, well, you should be Johnny Hates Rush. I don't hate jazz, though. I actually, I like jazz better than Rush. I'll just say that. I don't hate Rush. I don't hate them. You just dislike them. It's just, it's just not, you know. I get it. I don't know. See, Rush, and I don't want to get on a Rush tangent. So I, have, I still have to show a guitar, everybody, so nobody leaves. <laughs> um, I think Rush is one of those bands where there's really not a gray area of fan. 
for Rush. You either like Rush or you don't like Rush. I don't know many people who are like, yeah, Rush is all right. No, I know people that are like, dude, Rush is the best. Rush is one of the best. Man, what Neil Peart, man, I, I, I tell you. You know, that stuff. And then there's like, oh, God, I can't even, I can't listen to Rush. You know, Getty Lee's voice. There's all that stuff. Maybe musicians. Maybe maybe, maybe there's definitely musicians out there that are drummers. Drummers especially. Let us know in the chat or comments down below in playback. Well, there's uh, musicians who appreciate, of course. You know, I'm a musician. I, I There's certain music that I, like uh, country music. I'd rather listen to somebody throwing up. Then listen to country music. I'm not. I even, saw, I'm not even I saw somebody puking the other day. I'd rather watch that than watch a country. I mean, you know, some of the some of the chicks in in the country uh, in the country music are pretty hot, but the music, I I can't do it. Can't do it. It makes makes my skin crawl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I I can't do it now as much as I I used to. I I was on a new country kick back. Uh, in 2000 2000 i would say i was where where i was where i was listening to where new country was like you know that's the station i had it on and and because you know if you if you think about it those electric guitars in the new country that's like the that's left over from the 80s a lot of that stuff it's the same same type of type of guitars the solos the parts um yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, bottom line, I don't, I don't, I don't dislike, I don't dislike anything. You really? <laughs> no. There's, there's stuff that I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather take this over that. I can, I appreciate everything as a, a musician, as a person. I, I can appreciate it. I, I can see the, the, the. This is corny now. Yeah, it's, it's getting there. <laughs> So you're gonna leave a thumbs you're, down. Leave one now. You're telling me I didn't even thumbs up tonight's show. Everybody, give a thumbs up, um, <laughs> and subscribe and do everything else that Johnny tells you to. Yes, I. So there's nothing that ever. You go into a store and they got music playing over the PA or the speakers, or something comes mm -hmm. on the radio or on TV, and you're like, "Oh my god, you got you got to turn." I can't listen to this anymore. Uh, I, I do switch off the cars for kids when I hear that now on the radio. Um, one, eight, just, seven, seven cars yeah. for kids. there's yeah, a country one. version of that. Did you know that? Yeah. There's the regular version with the kids singing and the guy sing the guy singing. There, there's a country version of it. Uh, there's not, we need a punk version of that song. If you guys are listening, oh, that's easy. We could, we could probably, uh, we mix that, that up in about 20 minutes. Me and you. Yeah. Yeah. So that I tend to turn off. Elbow up. Otherwise, oh yeah. Elbow up. <laughs> Otherwise, pinky out. Otherwise, I don't want to spill it. And this is the uh, the lemon, the lemon uh, cello. Is oh, that lemon cello. Lemon cello. Remy Brought Lecoy. to you by. Remy See, Lecoy. Mancuda. He jokes about bang energy. You know, they 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 could care less about us, but. Uh... <laughs> Uh, what? What is going on? Oh, uh, <laughs> Brendan Butty says, "Get James Backer out of here." He says, "Rush is one of the most overrated bands ever." And Brendan, that's that's his favorite band. Ah, uh, it's so funny. That's cool. Yeah, th there's no right or wrong when it comes to what you guys like. No, of course not. Unless can... you're into unless you're into something really weird and illegal, then that's wrong. But but music wise, th there's. There's no right or wrong for music. Music is music. Whatever gets you, gets mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. I mean, some That's, of the lyrical yeah. content and some of uh, modern pop slash like some of this rap stuff, I don't think is helping out any of these kids. But that's a different. That's a whole nother show. Yeah. Did you Did you see though? That's right, Brendan. That's right. I don't know if it was the one that you just played. Maybe Maybe I didn't hear the whole thing. I have to burp. Ah! Maybe it was in that, but Sammy had said, yeah, I think it was, I think you would play that. Sammy had said, uh, some of the, a lot of the lyrics up until right now, a lot of lyrics, he just like threw in there. Did you hear that? Well, yeah, he said 
because they were rushed a lot of the time and he's like he just had to, yeah he had to put something there he would just throw stuff together um but i, th I think carnal knowledge and, and right now that was like the first time he really really thought out the uh did the, you just did you listen to what he yeah did you is that what he said or not? Yeah, he said that it was the longest that they had that they spent. Yeah, I heard it. I, I, I woke up this morning. I didn't get out of bed till 1 o'clock. <laughs> I woke up this morning. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get up till 1. Nah, 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 nah. I didn't get out of bed till 1 o'clock, so that, that's really weird. Oh, you lucky. Um, I miss those but, days. But, yeah, I, I saw it or heard it, like, immediately because, you know, I get tagged in it and people send it to me, and which, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's, but you know, when, when people send you stuff like that, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but when people send you stuff like that, are you like, do you say to yourself, you don't think I already know? No, that's really? what I was going to say is we're finally at the point of doing these shows when it comes to Van Halen, when it comes to stuff that people know that we that we like, you know, because we're personalities and that's we we think we know you guys watch this because you 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 like I mean, it's the truth. You guys like, you guys appreciate what we do here. And and it's, th thank you, thank you, thank you so much. But no, I, I thought about this the other day. You know, we, we're finally at the point, myself, I'm finally at the point where if there's something Van Halen, and if I miss it or don't know about it, Somebody will somebody's going to tell me about it. So I, I think that's awesome. I, th I think it's amazing. And now I'm running the second biggest group on Facebook now. 88,000, 89,000, whatever, whatever the number is. Um, so if there's anything, I'm going to hear about it. Somebody's going to tell me about it. Actually, today, somebody uh, uh, texted me. Hey, Johnny, I don't know if you saw this. I don't know if you saw this. Yes, I did see it. I saw it when it first happened. I, I know all about it. But thank you for, for telling me about it mm. as well, because it's it's just awesome. It's cool. It's it's I don't know if that makes sense, but it does. Of course it does. But we appreciate you guys and and uh it's you know after because we've been doing these shows for a lot of years, like six six years, seven, I don't know. On a schedule, we've been doing these for, for five years now on a, a schedule. And what's and, amazing in about three months, I'll be going on four years. <laughs> probation isn't that i think it was august or september of 17 that oh, wow. i uh was the first time i came on i think august of first time you came on man you came on to us yeah i came on <laughs> it came on you both you yeah. and me. yeah but see it's cool it's like after so many years of doing this and not that we're we're not done at all. I mean, we're just starting. We ain't this done. This time we're, just getting, we're just getting started. But it takes a long time. It takes a long time. And and uh it's it's cool. It's let, let me just say thank you so much for all you guys that watch this stuff, that tell us about the stuff that we like, you know, texting, sending messages, tagging on Facebook, tagging on Instagram. Um it's it's awesome, huh? It's getting late. I, I, should I bust this Is out it? now? Oh yeah, yes. New, right. new guitar J, new guitar J. <laughs> so well, actually, it's it's new guitar somebody else. But oh yeah, yeah. The 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 coup de gras isn't here yet. But this is something that. Um, Where's my thing? I should probably wipe it off. It's got fingerprints all over it. But anyway. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Oh, so yeah, I'll just show it and then I'll talk about it. How about that? Oh man, look at that! Wow, wait a minute. Oh crap, that's cool. <laughs> just one clap, that's all. I yeah, <laughs> so here is uh, the brand new, like these things literally just got sent to the stores and this thing of course you get it you get it for a kid and there's fingerprints all over it but anyway so this thing literally they just came out and uh 
you know, the little three quarter scale Ibanez micros, but the, obviously this is the PGM based off of his first Ibanez signature model. Uh, back in, I want to say, was it 90 or 90? Was it 90, right? 1990, I think he had his first uh, signature. Mr. Big, him playing yeah. those? Yep. Yeah, it was, it was, I want to say 90. Yeah. So it's a pretty cool guitar. Obviously, uh, you know, these things aren't made to um, completely, you know, it needs, it needs to be set up. Like the bridge is, the saddles are pretty high. The action's high. Um, you know, if, uh, if Ellie ever wants to play it or Killian. How's it go? <laughs> How's it go? <laughs> Something like that. Um, but it's a cool guitar, man. But if she ever, you know, actually wants to start playing it or whatever, I'll probably replace the tuners with locking tuners. Maybe swap out the nut. Put something a little more high quality in there, and mm -hmm. uh, maybe the pickups or something. But I mean, it's it's a it's a cool guitar, man. And I got her a little. We got her a unicorn strap. A oh, unicorn wow. donut. Oh, so I like that strap. It's cool though, man. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a cool little guitar. So I had two people telling me to tune it how Eddie tunes his little guitar and little guitars and play that. But mm -hmm. you know, volume knob is in a cool spot. I'm thinking about stealing the volume knob. Oh, uh Oh, yep. oh I'm hot putting pink, it on yours. Yeah. Hot pink volume knob, man. Uh, you want but the that pink? It's, it's definitely a little hotter pink than it's showing up on the screen. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's not like a bubble gum. Like it's showing it's, I don't think it's as hot pink as the original. But it's uh, it's still cool though, and I you know, yeah, pretty that's resonant, very, you know. That's very cool. <laughs> I can't even play with this pick. I think it's the same as the strap. Yep. <laughs> wanna... <laughs> Is it too thin? Yeah, okay. yeah. It's it's a it's weird, you know. <laughs> it's so weird to like play something so tiny you know mm -hmm. <laughs> wow so it, and it still has a tag yeah the hang tag i didn't take it off yet just in case i return it no nah, i just i just haven't done it yet mm -hmm. so it's the pgmm11 in jewel blue that's what it is. Sweetwater has them in stock. So if you want one, call Jeff wow. Law. Ask for Jeff Law. Tell him Jason Hannon sent you, and he'll hook you up. Man, I'm still – it's been six months. I've been waiting for guitar picks. <laughs> I should call for you. I'm never so the, getting those things. The only thing that, that's – the I'd say the weirdest thing to get used to is they sent this with with tens. I believe the micros used to come with nines, but the scale is so short that they're like literally like, yeah, like rub, rubber bands on on these uh, on these things. The shorter guitars, you would want the heavier strings for one thing to keep it in tune better. Yeah, and by the way, just because I haven't showed this picture yet today. <laughs> That guitar, uh, that's a Paul Gilbert. There he is. The guy on my uh, my left for that Salvi. So I took a um, – I'll just show it real quick while I'm on here. So here is a little Ellie Vi with the guitar. Yeah. That was the last time she touched it. <laughs> <laughs> And that was that was Monday. <laughs> Monday. Monday. Well, hey, even even if uh, you know, even if you end up with that guitar, it's a cool guitar. Yeah, and it it, wanna... it it goes with your your Ibanez collection right there on. Oh on yeah, the, it does. On and I I well. never want to like force her or Killian to do something. You know, like she's only four years old, 
I didn't start playing until I was either 14 or 15. So it's not like if she doesn't play today or, or next year or three years from now, it's the end of the world. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's cool to have it, you know? <clears throat> um, and again, Killian as well. So mm -hmm. it's the cool thing. I just want to have like a guitar down there. And if they say, Hey dad, let me, let me play that. Like, yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, it's great. I mean, it's great because I mean, especially uh, uh, Ellie has been raised on on music, yeah. you know, and we've we've all witnessed this over the past almost four years, yep, or or whatever. Um, she's definitely she's going to be into music no matter what, no matter if it's guitar. I know she's got a drum set back there, yeah, stacked well. up because she she stopped playing that too. But that's fine. Like I said. <laughs> I don't want to like have hey, do you want to play drums? Hey, do you want to play guitar? No, let her. You know, she sees me playing guitar all the time. So if she one day wants to like, hey, you know, but uh, actually, actually learn how to play it. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's fine. But um, the hell was I just gonna say? I forgot. I don't know, but I'll make sure we get her some uh, designer. You know, we got the obviously I showed the Brendan butt cheeks pick before, but we got the nerd Halen picks you know mm -hmm. that's what i, what I was going to say is they should make they should start making um like evh guitars in the three-quarter scale you know mm -hmm. i Ooh. think they would they would kill it with yeah, little, the little guitars line. Like, why not? Little Wolfgang, yeah, little little Wolfgang ones, little little mini the little stripe series. Yep, like that. They would. You'd have people that would be. That, the, the, yeah, yeah, I know. You'd have people, people that would, didn't even that don't even play guitar probably want to buy one of those just to like hang it on the wall, like the little Eddie yeah. Van Halen guitar. Yep. Oh, I could totally see. I think they're they're missing out on a. They could really crush it, man. They really could. Man. Yeah, little Wolfgang or a little, like you said, the the little Stripe series. The, they just call it the little guitar line. Little guitars. Yep, little guitars. Yeah. Well, Eddie did play a Frankie. Mm -hmm. The O seven O eight tour. He played a Frankenstein for little guitars. Yep. That was that was the. Was it the size of that guitar or a little bigger? That was probably probably three quarter scale. Because mm -hmm. I know I asked um I asked somebody who used to work at Ibanez that you know when they came out with the gem juniors, I thought they were three quarter scale gems. So I asked this person, I was like, why don't why doesn't Steve Vai make a three quarter scale gem? And he's like, Well, for starters. It's the handle routing and then this. That alone would like, they'd have to charge more money than a normal, you know, micro guitar. I think the Paul Gilbert is like 200 bucks. Uh, like the regular Ibanez micros that aren't an artist model, they're like 150, I think, or something like that. But I I'm thinking like, okay, why don't, this is me thinking out loud, but you see how the F hole things are painted on the Paul Gilbert guitar, right? Yeah. So why not yeah. just paint in black a monkey grip and then paint the same thing with like, cause it wouldn't be a tremolo on the micro. It would be a hard right. yeah. So just paint on something to mimic the, uh, the routes here, Yeah. That'd be you cool. know? And okay, if Paul Gilbert's model is two is two hundred, then charge two twenty five for for a mini gem or something like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just think it's another it's one of those missed opportunities. Like, man, this guy he could be crushing it. Mm -hmm. You know, you never know. I mean, a lot of that stuff uh, is in development for years. A lot mm -hmm. of a lot of a lot of those things. Um. So yeah, who knows? Wait, Brandon, I, I, sent an, I sent an email to somebody, one of my connections um, under the Fender umbrella. 
uh, with a whole with a laundry list of ideas. And uh, who knows? Who knows where it went? But I, cool. got, some, I got some good ideas. <laughs> you know, for instance, I know we got to go in a minute, but you see how DiMarzio has the the universe strap, right? Yeah. They have like three or four. I have well, it's it's downstairs, but I have the um the orange one, the orange swirl strap on my mm -hmm. orange Joe Satriani. They have a blue one, they have like a pink and blue one, they have the ones for the P and L that are the different colors. Dude, if they made a striped nylon strap, an EVH nylon strap that was striped, like the like you know, the 5150 or the uh or the Frankie. Dude, you can't, they wouldn't be able to keep them in stock. Like, oh, we don't have any left. We keep selling out every time we put them back. Up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that to me, that that's like a no brainer to have something like that. It really is. No brainer. And if yeah. they could do this design on a nylon strap and charge 25 bucks or 29, I forget if or I forget if these are uh 25 or 30. But if you can charge for that for a clip lock guitar strap, a hot, awesome DiMarzio clip lock, it's, there's not a cost thing that's involved. It's not like, oh, we're going to have to charge too much for them. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that pisses me off. I want it so bad. <laughs> well, I, I, I think... Uh, I, I, I think... Uh, um... I think going forward, I, th I think uh, we'll see a lot of a lot of cool and interesting things coming up. Well, if anybody's watching and they want some ideas, I got a laundry list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you never know who's watching. Okay, so I want to say I want to say hello, shout out to my friend Jay Turner. Hey now. Jay, Jay Turner, I play a little bass when we do little guitars. He plays <laughs> bass in a Van Halen tribute. Um, dude, what's your band's name again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking. He, he sent me some a uh, picture of some guitar picks. Here are his picks. When when he uh, when he play when when they play or when they're gonna play. There's some of his his band's picks right there. Oh hell yeah! So doesn't it have the name right on there? It's kind of small. That's what she said. Oh, it says. Wait. It doesn't say. <laughs> Matt, what's your what's your band's name? <laughs> I know you were in a different band years ago. You were in a Van Halen tribute that had a different name a long time ago. Um, maybe it's the same one. I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. But yeah, thank you so much for sending sending that. J Jay. Oh, well, oh wait, this is your base. Oh, here's his bases. These are cool. Oh hell yeah. Here we go. These are cool. Isolate. Wait. Amazon. Oh. Yeah, you guys can see that. Yeah, the ja the Jack Daniels. Those are his bases right there. There's you the little the bass, you're right, yep. You I got see the it. Yamaha, and you got a, a little bass for little guitars. Yeah, because a, lo a lot of you guys might not have noticed when they would do little guitars, Michael would play a tiny bass. Oh, that's cool, man. Yep, that is neat. Very cool. Hey, what's your band's name, man? I'm blurry. I can't remember. Text me real quick or say it in the chat. And then go look them up on social media. Mm -hmm. I've known that dude for years. Jay. Jay. Uh, what's his last name? <laughs> <laughs> Turner. Jay Turner. I've known him for a long time. We met at Jason Jason Becker's house. It's Mean Street? Keith Campbell's saying. Okay, his band's name is Mean Street. Okay. Awesome. Awesomes, you guys. Don't leave yet. We got some some things to say. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for, for watching us. Yeah, and don't forget, tomorrow night, we got the other guys coming on too, and I'm sure we'll revisit some uh, memories from the Carnal Knowledge 30th anniversary. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, it might be these guys. Okay, where's the captain? We got to get him back. Mm hmm by the way, that reminds me. Tomorrow night, I'm I'm going up to San Jose tomorrow. Oh no! Is it? What am I gonna um, do? So, but I can run the show from where, wherever I am. So, if I'm in case if I'm driving, you guys, it'll be normal. It's just I won't be on here. Or either way, either way, um, seven. Yeah, because the thing I'm going to starts at seven, so it'd be starting right now, and then probably right least, now i wouldn't be home for another couple few another few yeah so i'd be getting home like maybe an hour into tomorrow night's show so you, you guys might have to uh run it but i i can start i can start it from where i am so that's fine i've done that for you guys on, your, on, your, on your wednesday yeah on your your wednesday show i've done that so <clears throat> So anyway, yeah. So Johnny's saying he's he's gonna be somewhere, and all Dave all night wants you to start it an hour earlier. <laughs> we could. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe maybe you'll you guys will see some some footage from where I am tomorrow. Maybe on here. Ooh. We'll see. We'll see. I do know the way to San Jose. Wait, no, I I do. It's a very very dangerous road called Highway 17 that takes you there. Ooh. Thank you so much for watching us, you guys. Make sure to leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new, if you like Van Halen, if you like guitars, if you like rock and roll. This is the place you want to be. This is called Johnny Bean TV. And let's say thank you to our, our channel members. Thank you so much, you guys. These are the, uh, the, the major, major supporters of, of the channel, of these shows. All these people, they're awesome. Check your yeah. tires. Steve Carmichael. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'll check my tires. Uh, okay. And then again, again, leave, uh, not leave. Please don't leave. Um, Giphy, create, create some gifts from from these shows like when this show is done here take the link from this youtube show right here drop it into giphy create a gif of jay holding that ibanez guitar of me <laughs> laughing you know whatever hashtag johnny bean tv or of jay eating popcorn for two hours jay or johnny popcorn. or johnny flinging a mole or a vole <laughs> That was so funny last week when did this, you actually see me throw it? Yeah, I was I was I was like, what the hell? I was just watching. And who I forget who was talking. Was it Paul or John BL? Just like going on like normal. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm like, look at Johnny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He he brought he brought a a vole in with um with some grass and stuff hanging out. And I guess that's called garnish in in the world of of uh, being a cat, a cat person, a kid. When they bring something in and it's got grass hanging out of his mouth too, when they just grabs it, it's called garnish, I guess. Uh, what else? Follow me over on Twitch. I'll be live over there a little later tonight, doing some GTA. Follow me. Just search Johnny Bean over there. Hashtag games, not hashtag, uh, exclamation point games in the chat. We'll, we'll, we'll get you the link and follow me. I've only got like 40 followers over there. I need a few more. There we go. Games. Uh, let's see what else. I don't know. We'll see you guys. See you Might guys help. tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow. And again, uh i'll be somewhere maybe you guys will see footage from that maybe we'll see um but tomorrow night strategy night live with your host john Beale. 
So, all right. Thank you, thank you. Jay, you rock. You as well. <laughs> we rock. We rock. Thank you. Good night, Wisconsin. Can't drive 55. Uh, all right. Where's the end? How do you turn this off? <laughs> all right. Johnny B TV. Bye. Bye. <laughs>